Hey y'all, welcome, welcome back. Ladies here, she says hi too. Hello everybody. <laughs> I hope you're all having a lovely Sunday. Um, it's artistic license, the stream where I do whatever I want. Hello Lunar with the first, I see you friend, I see you. Um, I realized I forgot to do your spins for your sub yesterday, even though you did renew. So, and I, and I know you're at church right now. So do you, if you want me to go ahead and do your spins, let me know. Otherwise, you let me know um, when you get home from uh, from church today, and we can do them whenever whenever that is. Um, there's no rush from my perspective. I just forgot because it was while we were on the starting soon screen. So I was like, oh, um, by the time we went live, I was like, um, just focused on other things, you know. Do it now. Okay, you can't wait. Okay, let's go. Let's see what you get. Let's pull it into frame so you can see the... Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh wait, hang on. This is for live only. Sorry, YouTube viewers, I have to pause the recording. All right, all right, I turned the recording back on. Okay, you guys, so what are we doing today? What are we doing today? We are maybe, hopefully, <laughs> having our last Final Fantasy I stream. Okay, we have to finish the bestiary, and there are two rare monsters, and there's one regular one we're not gonna have any trouble with, but there's two rares. And um, some people, this takes 10 minutes. Some people, it takes 10 hours. Oh, I don't know what's gonna happen, but we gotta find the rares, okay? I, I can't, I can't, I can't not 100%. You know what I'm saying? I can't not 100%, I have to, okay? So, all right, yes. Come on, OBS, show them the game. Why, there you go, okay. That took you entirely too long, OBS. Pick it up. We need cool person energy today. Cool person energy, okay? There we go. All right, let's, let's load the game. We're gonna quick save, okay. So I am down in basement four of Chaos Shrine. Right now, that's where one of the uh, rares is. I did go run there off stream. Cause from what I can tell, um, this one's a little bit easier. I don't know why or what that's about. But anyway, apparently people had less trouble with Iron Golem than they do with the other um, rare. So anyways, we're hunting Iron Golem first, who apparently appears, oh wait, our encounters, encounters were off. Um, apparently appears only on this floor of the Chaos Shrine. So, um, yes. Now, I also need to get to level 50, so we are gonna fight these battles. I don't know if at some point I'm just gonna start running from battles that are not, you know, what we're looking for, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, okay? Um, yeah, I feel like the game's a little loud. Is the game a little loud, you guys? Do I, should I turn that down? I'm gonna turn it down just a, just a hair. Y'all tell me if I turned it down too much. But yeah, I think, um, okay. I think that looks a little bit better. I just, I don't want the game overtaking, you know? I don't want the game overtaking. So yeah, that's the point of today. Point of today is to try to 100% by getting these last two uh, bosses. That's good. Okay, thank you, Lunar. Thank you. And I trust you when you say like the volume is good because you're distracted by kids. So if the volume still sounds good for you, like then it's probably pretty good. Okay, this is Stone Golem. This is not what we want. We want Iron Golem. Okay, we're looking for Iron Golem. Um. So that's if we flee the battles. It do, It is gonna go faster if we just run from everything, but like, I don't know. Oh, purple worm, that's another one that we needed. So now we've got purple worm. Um, Koneko, hello! Koneko, how are you doing today? We're, we're looking for rares. We're, um, we're doing this game's equivalent of shiny hunting, okay? Um, so this was the only common monster that we did not have in our bestiary yet, was the purple worm. But, um, we have him now. And so there's a, one other rare here, Iron Golem. And then we have to find Warmech, the other rare. So yeah, I need, like, good vibes. You know, I need all kinds of good vibes. Uh... 
so that we can find the two rares. I'm doing great, having a good day. Oh, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. I'm having a good day too. I had a big old salad for lunch that was delicious. Um, we had some like leftover of various things that I made into a salad. Like a little bit of um lunch meat. We didn't quite finish it with sandwiches, so. I made a salad with some, it was good. And then I've just been chilling. You know, just chilling today. Put in some thought. I don't know, how, how did I not find purple worms the first time? The fuck, like they're everywhere. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been doing today. Just kind of chilling. Put in some thought into like, what comes next. Uh, Final Fantasy 1 was a very short game, you guys. We beat it very fast. Very, very fast. Which I was told it was a short game. But it was, like, very short, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, we just got level 50 for all party members. That was one of the achievements we didn't have yet. So that's cool. That's cool. So now we just have the bestiary one, and then the, there's a, the final achievement is get all the achievements. So we have effectively... We have one more achievement, because getting that one more achievement is going to give us both. So yeah. Hopefully, this will not take the whole stream time today, but it might. It might. I've heard some people uh, with experiences that they would have taken four hours, if not more. So hopefully, this will not be true for us. And I did look to see if anybody like had mods for um, changing some of the rarity of the monsters and things like that, because in the original version, it was like three out of 64. So it wasn't quite as rare on the original NES. The rares weren't quite as rare. So I thought that was very interesting. So I looked to see if someone had modded that, you know, to make things a little faster, but no such luck. I found no such mod. Um, so we're stuck at the one in 64, you know. We just have to deal. But it's okay, we persevere. You know, we persevere. Hopefully we'll find Iron Golem quick. From what everything that I've read, people seem to have better luck with Iron Golem than they do with Warmath. So, yeah. Hopefully we'll find him quick. That's why I chose to we'll do him first, and then we'll go do Warmath. Let's do some potions. Oh, I should buy more potions. We can enjoy the music in here too, which I do think is really freaking cool music. I guess we can start fleeing. I mean, I guess we don't need to fight all these battles uh, since we got the level 50. I don't know, is there any reason to level beyond that? I really don't know. The music in here is a vibe for real. I like really like it. I think that's, I think, and I think it's so cool that even back in Final Fantasy like one, the music is like a huge part of what makes Final Fantasy's quality so good. Now, obviously these tracks are like remastered versions of the songs. Um, but, uh, but, you know, the core is there, right? Like, the core is there. Apparently, I have an Alexa notification. <laughs> Don't know what that's about. I'm not gonna invoke her because then she'll talk. And we do not suffer, uh, machines to talk to us unless we have to. Okay, um... Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I want to check something. We're going to turn Cursor Memory on. Okie dokie. And then, and we're going to flee, and then it will curse our memory fleeing. Okay. So if we do this, then I do believe that on the next battle, it will curse our memory that. And we can just, like, hold the button down. I think. I think that's how it works.
Man, they pick on Kitty a lot. Oh, it didn't work. Wait, I could not flee? The fuck? Excuse you. There is no way. I am, like, so overleveled, right? Like, if there's an achievement for getting to level 50, that must be overleveled in this game. That's right, escaped. The heck? Yeah, okay, yes. We've got cursor memory on that. Yeah, unfortunately, Landon's not wearing a ribbon. So she gets all the problems. All right, come here, Iron Golem. Okay. <laughs> okay, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, here we go. Um. All right, what do we think is... Well, let's... Okay, well, let's heal. Okay, it's, it's freaking sweet. Um, I want to kill him fast. Let's flare. Ouchie, a hundred damage just from a regular hit. It's kind of gross. Oh, they died fast. Okay, yay. Hell yeah. All right, that's rare number one. Um, <laughs> okay, let me just show you guys. Let's quick save. Yes. Okay, and then we have to go back. Can I? How do I do it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. So let me, did I quick save? Uh, yes. Okay, I did, I did. All right, we're gonna pause menu, return to title screen. Yes, that's fine. I, there's no unsaved changes. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Um, extras. Bestiary. Okay. Show you guys. We have everything. We have everything until the last one. Okay, you see we have all the things? Okay, here's what we're missing. This guy right here. This? 118? This is Warmech. Okay. Warmech is what people have spent hours of their life trying to find. It apparently, according to the Googles, has the same rarity as Iron Golem, which we just found very quickly, okay? Does this mean we have good luck um, for this playthrough, perhaps? Let's be Koneko today. There, let's be Koneko. Um, so hopefully that means we're gonna go and we're gonna find Warmech very quickly. Uh, we gotta get, oh wait, what am I doing? Oh, I have no tele- mother- mm. Oh, but I have exit. Exit's what I really want anyway. Get me out of here. Alright. Let's get on my airship. Alright, before we venture forth, we're gonna go have a nap. Um, because the missile is EP. Oh my gosh, aim better. There we go. Okay. Now, we are on to Warmech. Warmech spawns in one spot. And one spot pretty much only. I mean... Technically, it apparently spawns all over this dungeon, but from everything that I read, not really. It really spawns in this one specific hallway. So we have to kind of traverse through here to get to the end. Okay, so we're gonna keep encounters off and we're just gonna run around. And I'll show you guys where Warmech is supposed to be. Oh. Yeah, we got super fast. We zoom zoom. Because we don't care about none of this. With all these other monsters, whatever. We don't need them. We need Warmech. Oh my gosh, aim better. Oh, but we have to fight this thing. Whatever. 
it makes us. I don't really need to, like, but I can't walk around it. I'm sorry, Blue Dragon, you could have lived. In, um, in another design, you could have lived. Alright, so we teleport to the sky place. You'll remember this, we teleport around. Everywhere. This way. We're almost there. Alright, this is it. This corridor right here. Before you fight Tiamat. This is where Warmech spawns. So we need to find Warmech. Okay? Um, let's, yeah, let's flee from all others. Because I don't see any reason. Like, I don't, like, 50 must be a good level. So if y'all know about this game and, and I'm wrong, and I'm wrong, then tell me, like, if I should be leveling up. But I don't see why I should. Uh, I don't see it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, yes. <clears throat> Imagine randomly running into it while on the way to fight Tiamat. I know, right? And then you find out later that it's, like, the rarest um, monster in the game, but you, you found it. You didn't have any trouble. Like, imagine it just popping up for you. Like, it was like, cool, I like you. So, yeah. Supposedly, same odds as Iron Golem. We'll see if that's true. We'll see if that's true. I assume some the some reason why people have an easier time with finding Iron Golem than finding the War Mech must have to do with what other monsters are available in the you know the random uh, generator of like what's going to pop up. It must have something to do with that. So maybe there's just more possible monsters in this little area than there is in Basement 4 of the Chaos Shrine, so the Iron Golem comes up easier. So I learned a fun fact about Final Fantasy 1 also that I'd like to share with you guys. I hear, I've hear i heard this repeated so many times about how Final Fantasy was named Final Fantasy because it was a last ditch effort, right? Like Square was having financial woes and they made Final Fantasy as their like last game and if it didn't do well, the, the company was gonna fold, right? Okay, well, that is not true. That is not true apparently. Um, yes, Square was having financial woes at that time, um, but Final Fantasy is named Final Fantasy literally just so it could be shortened to FF for the alliteration. Any F word would have worked. They just chose final. It doesn't really have anything to do with their financial situation at the time. It was just a funny alliteration and they wanted to use the word fantasy. So they wanted something that alliterated with the word fantasy. And that's seriously all there was to it. Nothing else. I always heard it was that particular developer's team final attempt at working on a game. Yeah, I've heard that too. I've heard that a zillion times. But it's just not true. It, no, it's not even true of the core team. It just, it, I guess it just sounds so good that people have repeated it. And now it's in like a zillion articles and video essays. So people like circularly cite this false thing, but it's not true. There's interviews where they have asked uh, the team and they just say like, no, <laughs> that's just not true. Like, it's not like that. Um, it was just for alliteration. They, they could have picked any other F word. They just picked final. Yeah, I heard it first on Did You Know Gaming, yeah. I've, I mean, I've heard it on like in like so many places. Um, but you know, once something is out there and you're researching it yourself, 
obviously, like, if multiple sources are saying it, why wouldn't you believe it? So I can totally see why, like, so many YouTubers have it in their Final Fantasy 1 um, videos. You know, why wouldn't you? It, like, seems like such a cool story. But, um, but according to some interviews uh, with the team, it's just not true. It's just like, um, it's, it's just a, it's like an old wives tale situation. It's out there because so enough people repeated it that when you're researching, it feels like fact, but it's not. So I thought that was kind of interesting. A fun little, fun little situation that, uh, it sounds so good, right? Like it sounds like that story is real and should be true, you know? I wish it was, it would be a way cooler story. Then just we liked the alliteration. <laughs> Do I hear a little meow at the door? Do I hear a little meow? Oh, I didn't mean to teleport. I hope RNG this is on my side with finding the war mech. Because I would like to have that completion of this game. Uh, let's see. Poor kitty, like, she's getting beat up, like, all the time. There we go. When the enemies hit her, they just do so much damage. She has, like, no armor. Okay, so my... Dang it, I keep running too far. Okay, so my experience so far, like, in the first, like, what, 20 minutes? Excuse me, first 20 minutes of stream is kind of matching what other people have said. Like, finding the war mech takes longer than finding the iron golem, even though everything documented says that they are the same as far as in encounter rates go. But they're clearly not. Like, there's something else to it. There's something else to it. Because I just didn't see people, like, saying it took them hours and hours to find Iron Golem. And it didn't take me hours and hours either. Right? But we're clearly not finding War Mech as quickly. Oh, I guess I should also... I should quick save. So that if something happens we can easily like restart and be right back here in the spot. So I don't have to walk back through. Like if I run out of potions or whatever. Come on, flee. There we go. I don't- sometimes the monsters, like, do their cure or their heal or whatever is their first attack, and it's so silly. It's so silly. War mech, war mech. Oh, there's an ad break. Watch it pop up during the ad break. Someone sent a message, but I can't read all of it. The, I'm, my chat window is kind of small in OBS. Hang on, as soon as the ad break is over, I'll be able to read it all. Because a little ad break thing pops up inside the chat window and covers part of it. Doo 
do 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 Oh, I keep running too far! But this corridor is only like one tile wide, so... I run straight into the teleporter! Each time. Okay, there we go. This place reminds me of my favorite trope in RPGs. The very obvious boss arenas. <laughs> That's true. Tiamat's room is so obviously a boss arena. Even more so than the other um, four, like, elemental rooms. You know, it's obvious when you get in there because you see the crystal. But, like, this one is so ridiculous. Yeah, I especially love it when turn-based RPGs still have very obvious boss arenas, even though you get transported to a separate battle arena setting. Yeah, when fighting and don't interact with the environments at all, right? Especially, like, most um, really old-school JRPGs are like that, where the battle doesn't take place in the environment at all, you know? Oh no, Lunar got poisoned. Um... Because, like, I can think, like, the exception of that would be Chrono Trigger, right? But it was very unique for um, for being like that and for, for having the fights happen within the environment that you were in. Most RPGs was more like this, where you go to a completely separate screen. So it's like, you have to use your imagination. It's like the game... These games are constantly asking you to, um, just pretend. <laughs> just pretend! I should have stocked up on potions. Been playing very recent RPG games, Honkai Star Rail. Okay, and it's turn-based and it still has the super obvious boss arenas. Really? Okay, Honkai Star, Star Rail, isn't that turn-based Genshin Impact? Is that, isn't that what that is? It's like a gotcha, like Genshin, but it's turn-based instead of action game. Am I thinking of the right game? It gets even funnier after the boss fight when it's just the NPC standing around in this huge arena. Oh my god. Yeah, it's the same company as Genshin. Okay, okay. Is it good? Is Honkai good? Like, is it fun? I tried to play Genshin Impact and I couldn't get into it. Like, it was, there was nothing, like, wrong with it objectively other than being a gotcha. But I just, like, I don't know. I guess <laughs> if a game is going to have, like, something that I consider bad, such as gotcha mechanics, I think that I have higher expectations of other parts of the game. Like, they need to do more better if they're gonna do shitty things like gotcha so <laughs> i think i judged genshin very harshly and uh and that's why i couldn't really uh play it so yeah um <laughs> what do you think about honkai though i'm not because i've not played that i've watched a couple of streamers play it like um a streamer that i watched did a sponsored stream for honkai when it came out so, like, I'm vaguely familiar. But I haven't played it myself to really know what it feels like. It's pretty fun, but you have to be a fan of sci-fi. Okay, the gotcha element isn't so bad since you start off with a pretty decent team and you get a few free characters. Okay, throughout the story so you can save your gotcha pulls for characters you really want. Oh, okay. So pretty much you can still effectively play the game just fine if you don't do the gotcha pulls or spend money on the what I am I'm on the currency or whatever. I mean because it, I'm sure it has multiple currencies just like all the other stupid gotcha games. You know, like regular currency, premium currency, some kind of super premium currency. Like there's always like multiples to make it more confusing. So that you don't think about the actual dollar money. They do this on purpose. Yeah, it's very doable free to play, and you can get enough in game currency to save it for gotcha pulls of the characters you really want. I see, I see. Well, that's good. That's good. 
you know, if you're going to do a gacha game, I think you have to... If you want your gacha game to be really popular, you have to make it so that free-to-play people can still play the game, you know? Because gacha games that don't do that, where it's very hard to effectively play as a free-to-play player, I think they, they, like, they, like, cap themselves. Like, their popularity caps themselves, you know? And if everyone's not playing the game, to know, like, how cool you are, you know, whale that spends all the money and has all the things, then, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. So there has got to be a big community. And that's how you make the community, I think. So that the whales care and, uh, and come spend money on your game. It's all very dirty. <laughs> it's all very dirty, but that's, uh, that's what I think you have to do for gotcha game. Also, I've just, I've just never super gotten into gambling, you know. I mean, you know, I've been on, like, many, many, many cruises, and, um, and I've played the slots a couple of times, but, um, I don't know. I don't know, it's, like, kind of just okay to me. It's just not really for me. Oh, I walk too far. This way. But I do sympathize with people that, uh, that get too into it, you know. Come on, Warmack, come out and play. All I want is you. All I want is you, Mr. Warmack. You're the one that I want. Ooh, 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 honey. Star Rail is very doable. It's free to play so far. I heard the later parts of the story are a bit more challenging when there isn't just one right option to get through the story and different people play easily with different teams. Oh, that makes sense. How, so are you, how far are you in it? Are you like less than halfway, halfway over halfway? Like, is it, are you pretty far, or have you just kind of, like, just scratched the surface? The trade-off is that it does get kind of grind-heavy at one point because you need to grind for materials to level up your characters. Oh. I mean, that's a lot of RPGs, though. I don't, um... I don't necessarily hate grinding. I, I do prefer to play... RPGs without grinding because most of them that's how they're designed and um, I don't want to trivialize the challenge level you know but um, but I'm not opposed to a little grinding you know I don't hate it and I'm also speaking as somebody who's like a fan of older RPGs and has been playing older RPGs for a very long time when I say those comments so I do think that, like, um, there's maybe different design philosophies in newer games as far as grinding goes. Because uh, the main uh, the main thing with older games is they would be balanced along where the game thought you w would be at that time in the challenge level. I finished two chapters of the main story. Okay, but I skipped over a lot of side quests along the way. Okay, so I'm going to catch up on those and grind for stuff to level my characters before I progress the story. Okay, okay. I mean, two chapters, you played a chunk then, I would think. Even if you're not, even if there's like lots of chapters to go, that's still like a pretty, still pretty decent chunk. So far, the main story is four chapters slash worlds and every chapter is pretty long. Plus, there's a lot of side quests. I see, I see. So four chapters total, lots and lots of side quests in there. That's like, that's kind of a lot of, you know, it's a good amount of content. And I assume it's... Since it's a gotcha game, they'll add more content as time goes on. Oh my gosh. I have to go rescue the room, but you guys, give me like one second. I'll be right back. I hear it beeping. Okay. All right. It was trying to find its home. I helped it find its home. It's charging now. Uh, more plot still being developed. It's nowhere near done yet. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. You know, live service games or whatever. Everybody wants to be the next Fortnite. Oh my gosh. 
and run away. Alright, Warmack, Warmack. I feel like maybe if I call to it, it'll appear like the Iron Golem did. So I can just be like, Warmack, come out, little Warmack. Where are you, Warmack? Hello? That's not Warmack. Old school flans look so different than flans look in Final Fantasy today. Let me tell you, this sprite is just a completely different situation than uh, than flans in later Final Fantasy games. Like, wow. Hopefully I really don't need these levels. OG Flan kind of looks like an ink cap mushroom. Oh my god, it does! That's exactly what it looks like. You're so right. It looks like an ink cap mushroom. I don't know what's Flan about that, but uh, but yeah. All right, so we found every other uh, monster in this game. We just need you, Warmech. Do me a solid. Don't take forever. Don't take forever, Warmech. We need you. We need you, Warmech. The game knows what you want. It should know. It should know. I want Warmack. This is my last challenge. My white whale. Or white squid. As we learned yesterday in Sunhaven. All I want is Warmack. I have half a mind to kill all these things that are not Warmack just to teach them a lesson about not being Warmack. But I let them live. I let them live because I don't want to waste my time. Not because I'm nice or I care about them. Because I don't want to waste my time. <laughs> Sorry, monsters. You're nothing to me. You're nothing. <sighs> One of you will be war mech eventually. So yeah, I was like looking at various forum posts um, about people doing the same grind that we're on right now, and I found someone that said it took them 10 hours. Now, I assume they were not fleeing the way I am, or like auto-battling or anything like that to speed up the situation. I assume they were just battle-battling, and they did say they got to like level 90-something. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <sighs> they went from like level 50 something to 90 something doing this grind which is just crazy i assume the top level in this game is 100 but it's just like there's no reason to get to ever go that high it's just pointless it 
Unless I guess if you want a really easy time beating up chaos. But I don't know, the way we did it was funner. The way we did it was funner dying over and over. <laughs> it was challenging, okay? It was really hard. Um, I was not expecting it to be so hard. I mean, the beginning of the game was kind of hard, you know? But then it got easy. I didn't expect the final boss to be, like, ridiculous. But it was. Like, Garland got such a glow up, you know? Chaos stole my lunch money. But it's okay, we beat him up. Oh my god, you're not Warmack. Someday, Warmack will come. Not today. This is my other um, Barber Monger shirt, by the way. Omega Knight. Okay. Um, oop. Uh, doors at 11, Omega's drink free. Okay, you can find this on the Barber Monger shop along with many other uh, beautiful designs uh, made for and by the girls, gays, and theys on the internet. So if that's you, you can check that out. I'll link. I'll link everybody. Hang on, let me pull that up. Yeah, it's a threadless shop. Here you go. If you're a girl, gay, or they on the internet, buy some t-shirts. You'll like at least one of those designs. Promise. Promise, promise. Oh. What's happening? Okay, I clicked the wrong thing in OBS. We're all good now. We're all good now. What the heck? Why would you do that to Kitty? The disrespect, the di absolute disrespect for our monk friend. I can't. I just can't. There we go. We're all healed up. One hit. Just O-code her. Like, it was nothing. What did she do? What did she do? I mean, she was instrumental in beating up Chaos, but that's nothing to do with these people. Like, the heck? Why do they care? They shouldn't care. Shouldn't have nothing against poor Kitty. gosh, there are so many black plants. So many. So many. Another fun Final Fantasy 1 fact is they didn't try to translate or localize the first Final Fantasy until after it was already released in Japan. So there was like three, two, three-ish years in between um, when this game was released in Japan and when it was released in uh, North America. So it was a very long time. We had to wait. And remember, there really wasn't internet back then. So, like, we didn't know nothing about nothing. You know, it was like... It was like the purview of super nerds to know about Japanese games that were not over here yet. It's a crazy time. It's a crazy time. Over here we had like Ultima and uh, Wizardry and you know, we didn't have no Final Fantasies, not for, for a long time. Three years. Gosh, imagine if something took three years uh, to come out in different regions now. The riots, the piracy, nobody would forgive. Nobody would wait. We would just like, we would just like, Consume. Am 
And I'm starting to feel like... I'm starting to feel like this war mech prejudged me. Okay, like they came into this already not liking me. I'm kind of getting that feeling. Um, because he's still just, he's not, still not at the party. I don't know what I did to him. You know, I don't know what I did to him. Something. Something. I don't know. Why doesn't he want to be friends with me? I don't get it. All I ever did was beat up every other monster I came across. But, you know, it could be different with Warmack. Could be different. You never know. You never know. I mean, I beat up so many fiends in Spira. And then, you know, for 10-2, I made friends with a bunch of fiends. It, it, you know, it can happen. It can happen. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it could happen. Oh my gosh, flee already. Jeez. You're letting Kitty just get beat the fuck up over and over. There we go. <laughs> Geekstra! Hello. <laughs> I don't even have to look no more. If I, if the, if the, that scream, not scream, the first scream that's the kitten. If that scream comes up, I know it's you, friend. I know it's the Geekstra. <laughs> How goes it? Um, pretty good. Okay, we already found the one rare Iron Golem, like, really fast. We're hunting Warmech now, um, which everyone online complains about. Once we find Warmech, uh, we'll, hun we'll have 100 percented this game. So this is our last task. And apparently it could take many, many hours. So hopefully it doesn't for us, but that's that's the possibility. That's the possibility. How is your Sunday going, friend? What do you have uh what do you have to do today? Anything fun? We have seen so many black flans. And so few Warmax. And I keep accidentally stepping on this teleporter. Still dog sitting until tonight, but doing some laundry and washing my dishes I used. Oh, cool. So you had, you had the whole weekend of dog sitting. Gonna game until I have to go. Sounds good. What do you, um, what do you play? And I think you, did you tell me yesterday what you were playing? I'm trying to remember. I feel like I might have asked this question yesterday and you told me. I have seen everything multiple times. Where is the war man? Where is he? He is rare like a shiny. Destiny 2? Just grinding some weapons that I want and then gonna take a break for a little while and beat some single player games? Yeah. It's crazy to me, Destiny, that people are still playing Destiny 2. It feels like an old game to me, but people are still playing it. People are still playing it and love it. I think that's so cool that it still has an audience. Yeah, I've been around since 2014. Yeah, it's old. It's old game. But I love old games, so. Oh my god. Koneko, why? Oh, stream elements? The heck? It's been, like, so unresponsive lately. Hang on. Yeah. Stream elements is just, like, it's not doing its thing. I'm trying to see if I can, like, go refresh it or something. Streamlabs have been very borked recently, to the point where a lot of people swap back to Streamlabs. I don't want to swap back to Streamlabs, but, like, Stream Elements just... It'll just die in the middle of the, of the stream. 
Like, and I know it's dead because I'll have people like actively chatting and my rotational messages just won't ever pop up. For like over an hour, they just won't pop up. So like, I know it doesn't work, you know? <laughs> Oof, indeed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's so stupid. Like, I just, I don't want to go back to Streamlabs. I switched away for a reason. I just thought, you know, their business practices were no bueno. Um, Stream Elements is much better. It has, it, it not only has, like, more better features, but they have better business practices. But, like, it don't freaking work! So maybe, like, who cares? If they're good people, if it doesn't work, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's not working. It's just not working. Well, the random GIF will still work because that's through the channel points, but uh, I guess the specific GIFs are not working. They're not going to work right now. Stupid. Well, actually, the GIFs, I don't know, the GIFs might still work because they're actually through trigger fire. But anyways, here's, here's what they are. Stream elementary, my dear, for real. There's the GIF list. Like, if it would post it for you, so you can see if those still work. Because they're actually through... Um, oh yeah, they would still work. Oh, it did the, it did the catacins because that's what it was first. <laughs> it's funny. Um, yeah. Okay, so those would still work. It just won't do the command for you. Yeah, there we go. Oh my gosh, remember that? I got so motion sick. I got so motion sick. I couldn't beat that game on stream. I had to play it off stream. <laughs> Cats are just crazy the way they move. Oh my gosh, I ran on a teleporter again! Stop teleporting. Cats really are crazy, yeah. I wonder if a cat ever gets motion sick, like if that's a thing that cats can feel. Can cats feel vertigo? I don't know. Because they have, they probably have like a different, a completely different balancing mechanism because they're able to like, you know, spin around and land on their feet um, from relatively short fall distance. So they probably don't experience vertigo because that whole mechanism works so different. Did you see the new Kitty Switch game that's coming out next month? Yes, little uh, little Kitty Big City. It looks so cute. Um, people were calling it like um, a knockoff stray. Or like stray but worse or stuff like that and I don't know I I mean I more cat games in the world in my opinion I thought it looked really cute and um, I'm definitely gonna play it I'm probably not gonna stream it um but I am gonna get it and play it I think it's more like untitled goose game that's what I think too I think it's like untitled goose game but it's a cat instead of a, of a, of a goose like that's what that's what it looks like to me but people, I saw people comparing it to Stray, and I don't know. I just wasn't, I wasn't sure that was really the apt comparison. But yeah, I want to play it. I want to get it. It looks so cute. It's too bad it didn't come out like sooner in the year, or we could, we would have played that uh, for the Kitty Cat's birthday for their game. I'm gonna get it. I'm so adore it, and I need it in my life. Me too. Yeah, I'm totally gonna get it. It looks too cute for me to not play. Because all I ever want is to be a little kitty in a big city. I wanna be a bodega cat. Wouldn't that be the best life? I feel like it would be. You wouldn't have to pay taxes. Man, you wouldn't have to like worry about bills 
or jobs or anything. You could just be a little kitty in a big city. Sounds like a dream. So yeah, I'm totally getting it. And I'll probably um, post in Discord or on Blue Sky or something about how it is. <gasps> Geekstra, why are we resting in peace? Is it is it about Little Kitty Big City? Or is, is are we resting in peace for stream elements? I mean, I think that's appropriate if we are. The freedom of being a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. For real. Being an adult sucks. Um, I'm also going to get the Moomin game. That embroidery puzzle game. And between those and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX, I have plenty of cute chill games to play. Oh. Oh, yeah. It is, it is going to be a, a good chill game. A uh, summer. No work, no bills, no responsibilities. Yeah. Chill, chill, uh, chill game summer. Cozy game summer. I need to look at the Moomin game. I haven't, I didn't really, I'm not super into Moomin, so I didn't look into it, but like, Moomin is very cozy, so I might like the game. Um, that's, that, uh, embroidery puzzle game did look cute. I've seen that. I need to play the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. I have never gotten into Mystery Dungeon. I've never played them. I don't know. Because those are the games where you are Pokemon, right? Like you become a Pokemon. Moomin Games looks like a combination of rhythm puzzle and stealth gameplay. Cute. I love rhythm games. There hasn't been a good rhythm game in a while. Rock Band and Guitar Hero were so amazing though. I spent so much time playing Rock Band when that was a thing. I would do the drums. It was so cool. I was definitely um, the kid that would go to the arcade to play DDR as well. I have many, many memories of uh, going and playing DDR at the arcade mall. At the, at the mall, the arcade was like in the food court area and the DDR was like right next to the door. So like you would walk in and there would be like a, a, like a gaggle of us uh, around the DDR and it was you had to get around us to get to the rest of the arcade and it was not a big arcade it was small and uh, and we would take it over with our DDR-ness it was so fun though it was so fun they don't make rhythm games like that no more oh we're talking a lot about childhood stuff today you know if I could just DDR, wouldn't that be a nice life? The only money I'd have to worry about is putting my quarter on the thing so I have my spot in line. I never played rhythm games before. I picked up um, Kingdom Hearts Melody and Memory, but I ended up loving that game. So once I get a PlayStation, I'll probably get the Out Rhythm game. Oh yeah, you should. The Out Rhythm's good. Theater Rhythm. The Out Rhythm. How are you supposed to say that even? I don't think I know. <laughs> but yeah, theater rhythm, fiat rhythm. It's hard because it's two different kinds of R pronunciations in English. Koneko. I know it's not out yet, but if I've never played a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game, do you think I should get this one you're talking about that's coming out for Switch? Based on what you've seen. Do you think I should get it and try it? Ah, I stepped on teleporter again. Okay, yeah, my experience is matching what everyone else on the internet said. I don't think that Warmech and um, Iron Golem have the same uh, spawn percentages. Rescue Team XD has been out for a while. I just didn't really have time for it until this year. Oh, okay, okay. 
I see what you're saying. So you were saying you're gonna play it soon. Coming up. Oh my gosh, flee! I don't know, now that I know a new Legends game is coming out, that's all I can think about in regards to Pokemon. Is like, when is the new Legends coming out? <coughs> Bless me. I need it. I need the Legends. <coughs> thank you, Geekstra, thank you. My nose just tickled so bad. Okay, we've been streaming for about an hour. It didn't take us long to find the Iron Golem, so I think we've been probably searching for um, the War Mech for at least 45 minutes. Still haven't found him. Do we think we will find him by 2? By 2 p.m., you know, when it's break time. We think we will find the War Mech. I'm, I don't think, I'm not so sure we will. I recommend getting it's a remake of the first Mystery Dungeon game. Oh, I see, I see. Um, I grew up on Blue Rescue Team. I've played a bit of DX already. So freaking fun. I made some really cool, a oh, really good quality of life improvements. Okay. The only problem I have is the way they change the combat. And it's just nitpicky because I like the old combat system. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Every time they remake a Pokemon game, they make, like, changes like that, you know? Like, the differences between red and blue versus, like, fire red, leaf green. So that makes sense. Yeah, maybe I'll try it. I mean, because that's kind of how I feel about, like, Fire Red, Leaf Green. Like, there's some nitpicky things that because of the fact that it's, like, on the Generation 3 engine that um, that I don't like compared to Red and Blue. Uh, it's all nitpicky, and, and it's, like, Fire Red and Leaf Green are still good, you know? And in a lot of ways, preferable to the original red and blue. not even a major change they just removed the default typeless base attack that used to be in the original mystery dungeon games which is actually good because now type effectiveness comes into play more but i liked the base attack because it didn't cost any pvds <laughs> yeah okay that makes a lot of sense yeah so they, they made it more strategic more like um like a regular Pokemon game plays with the type. Have a good dinner, Koneko. Have a good dinner. We had curry yesterday. Gosh, it was so good. Oh, oh, Stream Elements, you want to work now. You want to work now. You'll work with the Lurk, but you won't do the gift list. Whatever. Whatever. God, stream elements.
Well, fine. <laughs> Thank you for lurking, though, Koneko, for real. We love our lurkers here. Yeah, I might have to find a new chat bot. Stream Elements has been, like, so freaking temperamental. thinking like I'm gonna run to the tile just before the teleporter and I miss I miss and I run too far every time all right I need everybody to say a little prayer to RN Jesus because we've been searching for this Warmack for so long now. So long. We need to find him and destroy him. Teach him to hi what hiding does. The fact that he's hidden from me for this long will be punished. spot for Warmack, right? Like, I, I'm not... I didn't... No, I am. I am. I am. Stop thinking that. I, I read so much. I read so much about where to find him, and where other people found him, and how long it took people to find him. You're in the right spot. Okay. That's not the problem. It's just RNG. It's just RNG. It's just RNG. I tell myself. It's just RNG. We're gonna find him. Every time it's not war mech, I die inside a little bit. I might have to go stock back up on potions and stuff. like so low on regular potions. Okay, if we still haven't found him by time to take a stretch break, it's like in 50 minutes away, then we will go restock on supplies and nap before we attempt more time. I might need to make some tea. I am getting sleepy. 
But we can do it. We're going to power through. Finding Wormek today. It's happening. Do other of these Final Fantasy Pixel games have such have such a rare monster in them or anything like that? I don't I don't know. I guess there's a lot of them that, that I haven't played, so they might. But this doesn't happen in Spira. There's nothing so rare. Like this, anyways. Or I guess there are, but there's like ways to do resets. Blue, yes, we're hunting um, the rares today. We, we did find one of them. Like the mechas? Yeah, that's what we're looking for now. We need war mech. It's the last thing in the beast series, and then we'll have 100% of this game. So, we have to find war mech. Good old Ultima. Yeah. We're looking for, we're looking for war mech. Is war mech like proto Ultima? Is that what this is? Like, Ultima Weapon? Baby Ultima Weapon? Okay. But he's just a rare. It's not the same, right? It's not the same. Because you usually don't have to, like, hunt for this. This, like, super boss, extra bosses, whatever. You, I mean, you have to do stuff to unlock them, but then they're just there. Initially, War Mech was the initial inception of what Final Fantasy VI would evolve its entire concept around. Really? Well, I will eventually um, stream six, so we'll experience that at some point. In fantasy land of magic and dragons. Yeah, but then there's like this mech. But you know, I mean, that's fine. Like, you don't have to do medieval fantasy. This, yeah, but like, it makes sense. Like, in the context of Final Fantasy One, it makes sense why you would have a uh, a war mech, you know, up here, because this is like an ancient. Like, the people that used to live in this area in the sky are like an ancient civilization that lost their tech. Right? Like, it's. It's like a it's like a lost city of Atlantis type of situation. So like it makes a lot of sense to me. As to why there would be something like a war mech up here. Final selling point on Dark Souls. Okay, Blue, hit me. I'm never gonna stream Souls likes. Like, I don't think. I just don't think so. But do your worst. Much like in Elden Scrolls, you can join certain guilds, okay? Can you become a werewolf? In Dark Souls, you have Covenant, same thing. Oh, I see. Is, does one of them help you become a werewolf or vampire? In Dark Souls, the leader of one of these is a jump. What? It's a big kitty? looking this up. I want to see this. It's called Giant Cat. Its mouth is terrifying. Blue. Blue, why would you make... Why? Why would you make me Google this? It is called Giant Cat. 
But this does not look like a cat. It looks like a weasel monster with cat ears. And she sounds like Professor McGonagall. Oh my god. I found the picture of it. So you're saying this thing talks to you with its giant mouth? With its wide mouth? And it talks to you like Professor McGonagall? I'll show you guys what I'm seeing right now. This is what I'm seeing right now. Where's my, where's my thing? Okay, here we go. Like this. What is this? This is too wide. This is too wide. This, what is what with this nose? It's too big. And look at this body, it's too long. Like what the heck? That's not her? I looked up Dark Souls Big Cat. I've put in Dark Souls Big Cat, and that's what came up. Those are her guardians. Okay, well, what's her name so I can Google her? Because that is like a cat in name only. That thing is not cute. Alvina? Okay. Alvina looks like- okay, but it looks the same. With the weird mouth and everything. Yeah, I don't, I'm uncomfortable with the mouth. Blue, I'm sorry. I don't like it. Oh, great wall cat, what is thy wisdom? Well, the picture of Alvina does have it, like, sitting up on this, like, ledge and blocking your path. Very cat-like. That is very cat-like. Do you think it's cute? The mouth is just so off-putting. It's like... It's like Joker. It's, you know... I don't... I can't do my mouth that wide. That's the window? Well, that makes sense. Very Cheshire-like? Yeah. That's what I was just thinking. If that's a window, then she's Cheshire Cat with the... You know, with the smile. I don't know, maybe in context, because everything in Dark Souls is kind of weird and creepy, it's cute, but I, like, by itself, I was like, what? No one's cried as friendly as Solitaire in this franchise anyway. Yeah, nothing's friendly in the, in the Souls universe, right? It's all, like, trying to kill you. Everything does want you dead, yeah. That makes sense. You're supposed to die, that's just how that is. You know what doesn't want me dead, though? Warmek, because it's not showing up. Unless you join them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not joining Warmek. We're trying to kill him. 
I just don't want his bestiary entry. Stepping on the stupid teleporter. Black plans want to play, though they want to play over and over. Maybe it's my shirt. Maybe the war mech is like feels offended that Omega's drink free. Thinks that's like sexist? Yeah, I guess it would still be. Yeah, yeah. That's very sexist. But like, sorry. You know. What you gonna do? Sometimes you just have to have a, an Omega Knight to bring in, you know, to bring in the, the Omegas. Because why else would they come to your club? on now. Yeah, there's no way. Okay, they're not both 1 in 64. I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it, okay? Warmech is so much more rare than Iron Golem. I don't care what that wiki says. That's what I believe. This is a test of endurance. How long can I run up and down this corridor before I want to scream? Fight a war mech. I don't even know. I don't even know what fighting this thing is like. Like, what does it even do? What makes it so special? Show your face. Everything else will show me their face. Why are you special? Why?
And by the time this war mech finally shows up, I'm gonna be like so over him. It's not even gonna be cool anymore. Does War Mech have spawn conditions? He just spawns in this hallway. He just spawns in this hallway one in 64 chance. He just doesn't, he doesn't spawn anywhere else. That's his only conditions. And you can totally get him like before or after fighting Tiamat. Obviously, I have already fought Tiamat. This is, um, this is the, the save that we've been working on, you know, so this is the, the beaten game save. And he still will spawn. Maybe if I'm over here. Maybe if I walk on these tiles for a second. <laughs> maybe, maybe if I walk on these tiles for a second. Yeah, we beat the game, Blue. This is like a beaten, this is totally beaten file. Now you'll still spawn. Koneko, welcome back. Welcome back, Koneko. We haven't found Warmech yet, so you've missed absolutely nothing. We've just run up and down this hallway over and over. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm suffering. I'm crying on the inside and on the outside. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, that's his only spawn conditions. Is just he's he's in this hallway, this hallway only. Um that's it. Well, maybe he's like around here. Maybe we can find him if we circle the if we circle the crystal. Yeah, I'm guessing extremely annoying spawn conditions don't belong. Didn't become a design until 12. Yeah, I just feel like I don't know. I don't. I just don't remember other Final Fantasy games like having this much of a rare spawn situation. I know 10 and 10 2 clearly don't have it. We, we just played those. We just played 10, so... I don't know. Do other Final Fantasies have this? If anybody knows, tell me. Like, is this unique? I'm just gonna circle the crystal. Maybe, maybe he, maybe he's just... Maybe he's, like, hanging out with the crystal. And that's why he's not spawning, so we just need to circle the crystal. Maybe that's the problem. I mean, I understand it's, like, really pretty. It's really pretty. Very pretty. Final Fantasy and Cactuars and the Tom Berries and that bird in Jose, yeah. But their the spawn conditions were not Yeah, but that none of that stuff that's kind of rare in ten is uh is rare like this. I know because I completely finished the uh uh monster capturing. The monster capturing in that game. Where you have to capture ten of literally everything. And there was nothing quite like this. That darn, that darn bird. <laughs> yeah. Uh. You have to admit that the bird just refused to show up. Yeah, it would. It absolutely would. 
And the main reason that it was annoying is because, of course, you want to find ten of them for the monster arena, so... That was a little annoying. It was a little annoying. But they showed up more often than this. Like, I, I mean... They definitely showed up more often than this. Like, I would have got- I would have had ten birds. I would have had ten birds. We're an hour and a half in, I would have had them. But no war mech. Not, no war mech for me. I give up on the crystal circle. We're going back to the hallway. Yu-Gi-Oh is moisture creature in false bound kingdom. I don't know. I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh Blue, except that, um, the power's in the heart of the cards or whatever. And it probably friendship is magic because it's anime. But I don't know. I don't really know Yu-Gi-Oh. And the heart of the cards is like, it's like a believe in yourself thing, right? Friendship was indeed magic. Oh, good. I figured. I figured. I know nothing about Falsebound Kingdom, but I can already imagine it. <laughs> yeah. Power of friendship is everything. Basically every good anime GRH video. Yeah, for real. Because friendship is magic. Life is nothing without connections. You have to have some connections for life to be life, you know. They even drew a very cute <laughs> face on their hand as a sign of friendship. Oh my god, I love that. The power of friendship compels you. That's the, that's the friendship water. The friendship water. Oh Power my god. Friendship compels you. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah, Warmek. Okay, Warmek. You hear us? The power of friendship compels you. You have to come out here and make friends with me. Even if the permanent marker faded, we're still connected, Yuke. Is that a real line from the show or is that like Yu-Gi-Oh abridged? <laughs> Feels like it could go either way. I'm just saying. That is indeed a real line from the show. Oh my god. Sounds like an actual four kids dialogue moment. <laughs> I forgot Yu-Gi-Oh was four kid it was a four kids translation at first. I forgot about that. But yeah, it was one of the four kids animes. I don't fair. I don't think Jap Japan was any less cheesy. Oh, people say like they prefer the subs or the Japanese voice actors or whatever, you know. But I think okay. I'm gonna give you a hot take. Japanese voice acting isn't inherently better or worse than English voice acting. For for a good portion of weeb's that are die hard about not wanting to watch the English. The reason why they believe the Japanese voice acting is better is because it's not their native language, so they can suspend their disbelief more for the cringe elements. I'm not wrong. I'm, it's just... People have a hard time hearing the cringe in English when they understand everything that's going on because they speak English and they don't speak Japanese. So when the cringe happens in Japanese, it feels more genuine because they don't understand all the different nuances of the language. That's why if an anime is kind of bad, it's better in Japanese. You want to know why, why like the Japanese dubbed the music? That's it. I guess the dialogue in, in Japanese. Well, yeah, because then, because you, you can't judge the performance if you don't speak the language as well as you can judge the performance in English because you speak the language. So yeah, it's easier to suspend your disbelief. 
Fun fact, the Shadow Realm is completely made up based on a singular line from the manga. What? By introducing the Shadow Realm as a replacement for Death's severe injury, 4Kids introduced a much more harrowing and terrifying concept than ever was in the original series, especially once it continued into the later seasons. Congratulations, you played yourself. Okay, wait, Koneko. What is the Shadow Realm? What is the Shadow Realm? What happens when you go to the Shadow Realm? Like, how is that scarier than dying? Is the Shadow Realm, like, guaranteed hell? So you can't, you can't just be like, well, they're dead, nothing's happening. It's Shadow Realm ex is explicitly going to, like, a hell place. So the Shadow Realm is basically hell, okay. Eternal torment, undeath kind of thing, okay. So basically, they made canon the concept of hell. So that's where people go, period. So when you die, you always go to hell, period. Is that what you're saying happened for Yu-Gi-Oh? Because I actually enjoyed the English dub, there's initially unreleased dub that has a few episodes actually made in the English voice acting. It's closer to the original Japanese script and the, and the original Japanese soundtrack. Oh, that's cool, Blue. Yeah, basically. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that is terrifying. That is terrifying that in, in an attempt to clean things up, they made it um, more terrifying by saying that everyone goes to hell. Ah... Uh. What is this, like, pigs go to heaven, sheep go to super hell. Four kids is like, we can't have death in our silly children's card game, and then they introduced hell. Yeah, nobody dies, they just go straight to hell. The heck? That's crazy. Didn't the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga start out as a horror manga, though? Like, it started as a horror manga, but then... The card game element of it got so popular that they, it just became about the card game. Is that true? Is that did I did I learn that fun fact about Yu-Gi-Oh correctly? That's just I've never seen it or anything. That's just like a fun fact I've carried inside me for many years. It did, yeah, 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 yeah. So many black plans, oh my god. Getting low on high potions. Pegasus, the main buddy in the first arc, was supposed to die by the end of said arc, but they decided to keep him alive for the rest of the franchise for whatever reason. Oh, that's kind of weird. Could have been a good, um, Artax. A, a tra yeah, Ar Artax, that's the horse's name, right? Moment. Oh yeah, Pegasus was absolutely supposed to die in the manga, and he did die. Oh! Oh, but in the anime, they just keep him around. Pegasus is a villain turned ally. Oh. I see, I see. I see, I see, I see. I'm learning so much about Yu-Gi-Oh, you guys. Thank you so much for sharing with me. In the manga, he never got to become an ally. Oh, oh. So in the anime, he's like a Vegeta situation. But in the manga, they just killed him. Adaptations are crazy. But in the anime, he survived and got to be absolutely hilarious as some filler arcs later on. That's amazing. I love the filler arcs. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of them, right? That's what I understand. The filler arcs became the peak of the anime. How does that happen? How does that happen? That's not true for others. I know the, other, the only other thing I was into that had lots and lots of filler arcs was um, Dragon Ball Z back in the day. And it wasn't really filler arcs exactly. It's more like there's lots of filler episodes padding things out, you know. It just kind of made the anime being so long with all the filler episodes kind of just made it like so more soap opera-ish, which of course makes me more interested, you know. 
the Domo walking the, waking the dragons arc is still the best arc in the entire anime, and I'll stand by that. Is that a filler arc? Does that have anything to do with Blue Eyes White Dragon? Yeah, it is. Nice. You know, sometimes sometimes adapters know what's up, and uh, and they actually make things better instead of worse. You know, it does happen. Nothing to do with Blue Eyes White Dragon. Oh, <laughs> all all I know is Blue Eyes White Dragon is like the opiness. Like the super. Oh my God! I stepped on teleporter again. It's like the super OP thing in um in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a standalone arc with lore based on Atlantis. Oh. Introduces three new legendary dragons. Very cool stuff. I do like Atlantis stuff. I think Atlantis is pretty freaking cool. Con conceptually. Oh, I accidentally got Landon back on defend. I need to make her back to flee. <clears throat> what is that emoji, Blue? I can't tell. It looks like a yellow person waving a sign, and the sign has a beaver on it. The villain of the arc, Darts, is my absolute favorite anime villain, and I like to point at him as a villain. Oh. Which definitely also got me into redeemable villains. Exodia is not a beaver. I'm just telling you what the emoji looks like. Y'all don't gotta yell at me the heck. It looks like a yellow, like a yellow person. Like they have yellow skin, yellow hair. Okay, and they're waving a sign like this, and the sign has a beaver on it. That's what it looks like in the emoji. It's so little. That's what I see. I don't know what an Exodia is, but it looks like a beaver. Okay, so first I got up and I went to the bathroom. What? <laughs> Are we just recounting my morning? Exodia is an insta-win. Oh, it's an insta-win card? So beavers are very powerful in the Yu-Gi-Oh! world. That's what I now know. It's not about blue eyes, white dragon. It's all about the Exodia beaver. What is Exodia? Is Exodia a dragon? Because it looks like a beaver in that emoji. It's a person! <laughs> it's not even an animal! Wow. It's more like a suit of armor. Oh, okay. I see. So it's like a, it's like a golem sort of situation. Yeah, and it's also, like, it's just really tiny on, on my screen. Because I've got the a chat, like, just big enough for me to be able to read it. Because I don't want to, really want it taking up all of my information on my screen. So that is, like, so it's small. The emoji's really small. Exodia is supposed to be the human form of Osiris. Oh, okay. Even in the series, you can never tell if it's supposed to be armor or an actual person. The animation is so wonky sometimes. Oh. Oh, I see, I see. Well, let me just... I'm, I, now I really want to Google Exodia and see what Google says they look like. Well, Slifer, a giant fuck-off red dragon, is supposed to be his ascended form. Okay. That's, like, OP. Yu-Gi-Yo. Exodia. Oh. Okay. I see what you mean, Koneko. Yeah, it is it is kind of hard to tell what this thing is. But I do think it's supposed to be like a suit of armor person situation. 
Inconsistent animation quality is hilarious. Even sometimes it goes full turp. Sometimes it's full awesome, and sometimes you get gems like this person's mask moves with ex with his expression. <laughs> Here's the Funko Pop of Exodia. I take this as the canon way Exodia is supposed to look. Here, I'll show you guys. Um, let's see, where is my thing that's gonna show you? There we go. This is the Exodia Funko Pop. This is, um, this is what Exodia looks like now in my mind. I think this is the canon image of Exodia. I don't care what it looks like in the animation or in the manga. This is this is him. He looks like this. So yeah, that's my thoughts. Funkos are kind of funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah, things in Funko Pop form always look a little bit weird. My sister owns that Funko. Oh, really? It's funny looking. It's a very funny Funko. I have a couple of Funkos. I have a an Eevee one um, that my husband got me. I have a Groot one. I had a Vision one, but he, he broke. His head got weird, and it popped off, and so it was like on a, on a, just the spring was all exposed. He fell down too many times. How you go from a massive Golem-esque figure to a giant dragon? I will never know. The power of the cards, my dude. Power of the cards. Of course. Cards can do anything. Yeah, man, do people still kind of collect Funkos? Is that like a big deal? I feel like Funkos were such a big deal and then the pandemic happened and then we all like forgot about Funkos. Do people still do that? I have a Funko of Ghost the Dire Wolf. Oh, the Brand Stark Funko and a mini Funko of Shadow Heartless. Those are such Koneko Funkos. Oh my god. They're still a thing, just not as much. Okay. So they're not like they're not like crazy hot commodities, but like there are still some people that connect collect some Funkos. Let it be known that Yugi goes three feet when he transforms into Atom. Yes, okay, I did know that. That Yugi actually gets taller when he when he powers up. He has like a Super Saiyan thing that he does. And I have Lion Sora. Oh my god, that's so cute, Koneko. Lion Lion King Sora outfits are so cute. I love that land. The way they transform in that land. They have indeed gone the way of the beanie baby. Yeah, that's kind of what I what I think. Like some people are still kind of into them, but it's not crazy like it was. Because for a while, like Funkos were so big, like really popular Funkos, you could resell for a ton of money if you kept it in the box. And like there was all this, um, people would pay for like custom Funkos. Like I remember like seeing people that would that had like blank Funkos. Or like, or they would like get Funkos that were easy to to repaint, and they would like re-sculpt and repaint stuff on them to make like custom Funkos, um, which was like really cool. I thought like that was like that's that's some artistry. I thought that was really neat. We've been talking all this in warm. I know, right? Just back and forth, just back and forth down the freaking hallway. Thank you guys for keeping me company. I love you guys. <laughs> My parent partner has a Doctor Who Funko. Oh, okay. Um, Ven Venit Vanitas? Oh, oh, okay, from Kingdom Hearts. Um, Metropolis Goofy, Pharaoh Anthem. Yeah, I think one other, but I'm not sure. I forgot if they wanted to get another or actually got it, yeah. Like, I think that's probably what most people, they just have a few Funkos, you know, here and there. Um, it's not like it was, where there were some people that would have like gigantic Funko collections. This is like Mudman from Symphony of the Night. Is that one really rare too? Yeah, I told you. It's like it's, we're shiny hunting. For real, for real. Shiny hunting. 
I have a Captain Price Funko because it was gifted to me by my sister. Yeah, my Groot one was actually gifted to me. Um, it was Jeff's Funko and he was cleaning out stuff and asked if I wanted any of it and I took the Groot Funko. He's, and he's still in the box, actually. I'm like, I can see him up on my shelf. It's not in frame, but it's in, it's in my um, cabinet behind me. She stopped collecting right before C19 hit. Yeah, I bet for a lot of collectors, the pandemic is what killed it. Because that's when I feel like I stopped hearing about people talking about con uh, Funkos and uh, and uh, custom Funkos and, you know, all the craziness with it. And I don't know if she's still selling her collection. Yeah. She was only keeping her Aladdin stuff. Yeah, because at some point, I mean, unless you, like, really love, love them, love, love them. Like, at some point, they become clutter, you know? It's not, like, a cute collection anymore. It's just a clutter collection. And when you realize it's crossed the threshold into clutter, it's not fun anymore. What did you notice? That's Maru, yeah! I loved him. We, um... This was for, uh... We, got, we rolled a sticker face um, for Lunar's sub yesterday. She she re-upped her sub, but it was like the very beginning of the stream, like before we went live yesterday. And I just it, I just completely spaced spinning the wheel for her, so I spun it earlier when she popped in. We have sticker face. There's a pop-up store in the city where my unis exclusively sells Funkos and Funko-related stuff, but they're just a branch of a game store that decided not to sell Funkos in their main store. Oh, because they have limited space. Yeah, I guess around here that the places that sell Funkos are all like game stores and stuff. Like the comic book store has some, um, GameStop has some, you know. As far as what you can buy in store that's around here. Yeah, this freaking War Mac, he just, like, he does not want to play. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. They have a much bigger selection, much more variety now. I think it was a good move for them. Yeah, that makes sense. I want someone build an entire bead art of Cinema Roll. Oh, that's so cute. Took, like, two hours, I bet. Bead art takes a long time. Well, there goes all my high potions. I really did. I really wanted to be the lucky one. I wanted to be the lucky one in this not take hours and hours from me like it does for some people online. I wanted I wanted that to be me so badly, but that is not me. That is not me. This is I I I am having the same troubles as others, unfortunately. I had to stop about a year back because I'm out of a job. Oh yeah, that makes sense. And these things, oh my god, they one-shot Kitty again! Just flee! Why can't we flee? Is there a lot of rare stuff in the other, um... Final Fantasies? The other early Final Fantasies? Oh my gosh, I'm so out of potions. Okay, 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 okay. All right. We have to go, we have to go take a nap. We have to, I, heard, I thought I heard Lady of Little Meow Meows. We need to go take a nap and stock up on potions. Have you done the Pink Tail quest? I don't know what that is, Blue. In the, if, if you're talking about this game, we've done everything in this game except find Warmack. Literally. This is the only thing we have left to do. I need to reorganize my fig collection sometime? Yeah, but we're probably redoing parts of the bookshelf. 
to make room for other things and I can't be bothered. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like there's steps before that. It makes sense. Okay. Um, first, let's have a nap. All right, where's the item shop here? Oh, it's over here. Okay, I need more potions. Welcome. Are oh, the pink tail quest is an FF4. Okay, yeah, I haven't played that one. Magic number of 1 out of 64. That's what this is! This is 1 out of 64 nonsense. <sighs> I need a stretch break. It's that time. Okay, so <laughs> we didn't get Warmack yet. We've got two more hours of stream time to get him. If you are watching the recorded version of this on YouTube, thank you if you've made it all the way. Like, what a trooper. I love you. We're best friends now. Oh my god. Um, obviously, there'll be another episode up tomorrow where hopefully we find Warmack. Okay. All right. You guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. And of course, as always, um, don't forget to make it a great day.